So I see you're an atheist. Yes. Can I ask you why you decided to become an atheist, or if you have any background in any religion? Uh, I was raised Catholic. I didn't decide to become an atheist. I didn't attempt to become an atheist. Uh, things just started to um, to come together. As I, honestly, I, when I when I left religion at seventeen, eighteen, stopped going to church. I I wish I remembered, but I can't remember the specific things that I that I noticed in the sermons that were that were bothering me. But certainly, once I started to read the Bible, and it became very obvious. As, as you go from uh, sentence to sentence and, and see the contradictions and stuff. So take that with the science knowledge that I have in the science education and I'm a bit of a lay interest in physics that uh, a lot of stuff that used to be, used to think was one way now that we can, now we can explain. There just does not seem to be enough reason to believe what's in religion and there's a very good justification to believe what's in much of science, at least not not that's not what's on the bleeding edge, because that's still new, new research. Okay, so you're saying between like science and the scriptures in the Bible, you didn't you didn't like what you saw, and you were you figured like science disproved a lot of stuff in the Bible. Almost. It's not that I didn't like what I saw. Uh, I saw stuff that didn't make sense. Okay. And I wasn't I wasn't um, willing to just buy it just because. Just because I'm gonna just give me one sec. I'm gonna turn my light up a little bit. Go ahead. Um, do you mind if I like uh, tell you a couple things and maybe maybe not to convince you but maybe to convince uh, a couple people in here of maybe you know. I do not mind. We're here to convert. So tell me, tell me what makes. Uh, give me a little, little bit of background. What was, what was your upbringing? Um, neither of my parents are religious, and uh, me and my, me and a couple of my friends kind of decided, you know, we want to kind of look into God and see what okay. it's all about. And I, I had grandparents who go to church all the time, and I kind of wanted to go go with and see what it was about and okay. Fair enough. at first you know i thought i kind of thought the same thing like a lot of this could just be it's people just saying it right there's no evidence to back it up and now years later i kind of have realized like a lot of this stuff whether the fact that it's not 100 percent proven it's mm -hmm. it's more than likely that it is true then it's not true right so for that, example, position, yeah. Jesus' resurrection. One of the reasons I believe in that is that, you know, as we know, there's not a lot of women used in the Bible, right? Well, hold, hold on a second. Okay. Let's, let's just do the, the resurrection. And I was just about to ask you to get a little specific about what, what you found convincing. So let's, let's do the resurrection since you brought it up. Um, why do you think the resurrection is a reasonable thing to believe? Well, that there's, would come back to life. there's a few things, right? So, number one, um, after the three women saw that his tomb was open and um, that the huge stone had been moved and all that, there was thousands of people that felt an overwhelming sense of guilt, right? That no. they had just killed no. an innocent no. man. And that's not, that's not all... That's, a, that's interpretive. <clears throat> So just just like Paul saying there were 500 people, you know, we're talking about something really unusual here, right? Right. I mean, you know, coming back from the, the dead is not something that we see happen. So it's going to take something pretty remarkable to justify believing in that. Now, you've got a book that says, and I, I'll take your word for the paraphrasing because I'm not a biblical expert and we don't need to get into the specifics texts and compare argue over words or something <clears throat> so that that you know what did you say a thousand people felt or something like that felt something thousands of people felt an overwhelming overwhelming sense of guilt that okay. they had just omitted okay. this guy 
to so I, I, to me, that seems much more likely to just be a story and a myth, basically an elaboration. I, 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 I'll, I'll go ahead and give, give you the Jesus existed thing. So let's not even go there. Okay. So okay. Few, I, was, I should was, ask you that. Do you believe that Jesus existed at all? Like historically, not even like in the miraculously biblical sense. Do you believe he existed in history? I, um, I've read, um, Richard Carrier's material and he's come in, he, he did a Bayesian analysis of it and he's come down to the, uh, the opinion that it's about 30% likely that it's true. Personally, I don't have enough evidence um, to, to, well, I'm comfortable saying that he, he probably did exist. Well, let me just go right there because we know that there were other similar people at the time doing similar things. So it's okay. an entirely feasible hypothesis that he existed. And it's entirely feasible, again, because it happened to a dozen others, that he was crucified for what he taught because it was against the religion of the Romans at the time. Right? Right. So, and that he it is entirely feasible that he was crucified, as were others. So um, those are all fine because so those are realistic so, things. So I, I, I don't now I'm not I don't have enough evidence to say if I, I if I believe it it's like I, I use that ninety that one to ninety nine scale so I'll, I'll go to sixty probably sixty forty that he he did exist maybe higher even okay but that's that's where I'm at anything supernatural past that I, okay. I don't see enough justification and for. so I'll tell you this right there's no absolute evidence. 100% proven that it happened, right? Otherwise, everybody would believe it. So yeah, that's one of the greatest parts not about religion. Not necessarily. Is that, it, it could happen, and then nobody could believe it. But, right. but you're right. There's no absolute evidence for, and there's no absolute evidence against either. We're going to use absolute. Let's be careful there. So, yes, okay. I'll agree with you there. And and that's the best part about religion is that you have to believe in it, Right. And Why? you're not going to, you're not going to know, you don't have to believe in it, but if you, to commit to the religion, you are not going to get any proven evidence that shows you 100% that this is right. Right. Why, Anybody can be right. Commit, then why commit to it? What? Then why, why would you commit to it? If, if, if there is insufficient reason to believe it to be true, then why would you commit to it unless you have previously just made a decision that you want to believe and you're sort right. of looking. So previously you're, you're I had looking not believed there. right from, you know, a younger age and I learned more and learned more. And eventually there had become enough sufficient. I don't know if you could call it evidence, but things that led me to believe that it did happen. For example, if we're sticking with Jesus' resurrection, there were well, let's, three... Let's not, get, let's not get too far off because we I don't want to do too many tangents here because okay. we're on the resurrection and then you mentioned the, thousand, the thousands who felt guilty. So let's, let's finish that piece before we, we, before we go further. Um, thousands saying... A book that is written 2,000 years ago that says thousands felt guilty is just evidence of one person writing something in a book. Matter of fact, they weren't books back then. They were just like individual pamphlets or whatever they were called back yep. then, right? Before the canon came together. So it, it seems much more reasonable to me that, that um, for whatever reason, that the story got elaborated on because people, some, you know, the people that were writing the stories wanted people to believe I don't know why if they wanted to, to have a, a religion to to get rid of the, uh, so the pagan. So we had we had the so three. Why, why, so women why is, in the Bible, well, right? Okay, let me They're finish this. Very, Wait, let me finish this, and then we'll go to the women. Okay. 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 Because I want you to respond to this. Um, why why is it reasonable 
to believe to the point of believing of a guy coming back from the dead. A couple sentences in a, in a book that says a thousand people felt something. You see how I'm saying that that's not sufficient? To well, that's not the only people. reason. There's plenty of other reasons. Okay, well, then let's let's just take them one at a time then. Okay. So, okay, so you're good, you understand my point on the thousand, yeah. right? Right. Right. Okay, I don't see that as sufficient. So going to the next one, you were saying something about women, you were saying? Yeah. So throughout the course of history, we've seen women disrespected, right? They haven't been able to tell the stories. They've been oppressed, right? Yeah. And the most, arguably the most important part of the Bible, where Jesus is resurrected, the three eyewitnesses were women. Now, I don't know why, if a man was twisting it, for his own gain, would set the, the three most important witnesses in the, all of the Bible to be women when almost never in any other circumstance are women like an important piece of the Bible, right? So women are the people who told it. So why would they make that up is what I'm basically saying. I don't, I don't know that they did make it up. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe the, the, they're, I mean, you're talking about Mary, Mary Magdalene, and or are you talking about after the resurrection? You're about the, the women opening the tomb. So you're talking finding about finding that the tomb was open. Yes, finding that was tomb was open. Yeah. Again, I just I find that as a interesting story that I still does not give me enough reason to 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 overcome that huge hurdle of a guy coming back to life. And I mean, we know we know there were grave robbers. I know there's apologetics against grave robbers, but I it just just doesn't. It's not enough. It's a. I think it's a. You're right. I think it's a little bit historically unusual that the that that they would write the story. Well, if it just happened to be women, then it doesn't matter. There's no reason, rhyme or reason to it. It just happened that way. But if why would they write the story that way? and then not give women power in other ways. That's a little peculiar, but it doesn't really lead to a resurrection belief. So, okay, nextly for another piece of evidence is the Bible was written by over 41 authors who we don't know, right? They were um, from three I different think... continents. And the fact that their stories we, would line we, up. Do we, do we not know all of them or do we just not know most of them? I'm, I'm asking you. To my knowledge, we don't know any of them. I could be wrong. Okay. Well, then me too. Oh, okay. But okay. The point is gone. Okay. Um, and the fact that over 41 people's different writings line up and come together as, and these people who had never cooperated with each other or collaborated with each other to write, their stories line up. It just, that's... You talking about the New Testament now? Right. Not not the Old Testament. Yep. But, but the New Testament. Okay. Um, this again, I'm not a scholar, but the scholarly. So I have to I have to go to the scholarly consensus on this, is that there is one story, written by one author. Um, I want to say John. I don't. I, I I need to write this down, and then the other three were elaborations on the first one and there's strong evidence for this and like i say that's the scholarly consensus so you're so, saying like the bible was written by one person and then it was twisted three times over uh, twisted is not the right word i wouldn't put that for it i would say uh, i would say elaborated on because right? again remember these were separate books back then right these are like well gospels or whatever you want to call them Cha i don't want to call them chapters because they were they were all supposed to be standalone things um, it is evident from the way the, the, the four Gospels um, compare to each other, excuse me, that some of them have some consistencies, some of them have some complete inconsistencies, like the Bethlehem versus Nazareth birth location. And then some of them have more elaborate supernatural elements to the story. Than, than others that are completely not mentioned in the others. So it, it really does appear, and again, this is scholarly consensus, that it was based on 
one that was written first, and then the other three were written over, I don't know, 20 years, I don't know the numbers. Um, and each author had a specific reason to tell it his way. I'm guessing if that what would make sense to me is that each author thought that theirs was going to become the definitive story. <laughs> and and we, we have come to find the four different authors. Um, and then eventually, I, I find it rather interesting, frankly, that when they came to put it all together in canon, they just didn't pick they didn't just pick one that they actually put four in there because there are inconsistencies between the stories and, and some elements in some of the gospels that are not in other of the gospels. So I would, I would have, my guess would have been to historically to be picked like the last one written or something, or the one that had the most detail. It seems peculiar to have put in four stories telling a very similar thing with contradictions between them. So right. I, I, I don't I don't see it as as um, as you know four of the uh, apostles that were actually there with Jesus at the time and well if they were there together at the time they weren't disparate people who didn't know each other so that kind of kind of contradicts what you said earlier on too so but you see my point at least in terms of those the gospels at least. We can go further into the Paul if you if you want, but I'm, I'm letting you lead here. So you tell me. All right. Well, what the next point is. um, another another reason that I kind of believe that, well, that I do believe that Jesus was resurrected is because his twelve disciples died in horrible ways, and why would they do that over a lie? Right? They obviously believed it with their lives completely. And, you know, they they died horrible deaths. And I know maybe you're thinking, well, the Bible could have rewritten that, or the author of the Bible could have rewritten that and twisted that to their own. No, let's, 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 stick with your, let's stick with your telling. <clears throat> so they, but, they, they, and obviously, the, again, we don't know exactly if the stories are accurate, particularly of, um, of Judas, because we have two stories. But... Um, so they so they all died in horrible ways afterwards. How does that make it likely true that Jesus came back to life? All right. I'm going to I'm going to sum it up to you this way, right? Yeah. The ch sure. the chances of the whole universe even being created, right? Well, hold on. No, no. Hold on. You don't get to just shift subjects like that without answering my question. Then you can shift subject after you answer my question. Because I'm answering all yours. So, mm -hmm. and I'm trying not to be, um, I'm, I'm trying to give you fair due when, when you're, when, when you're due, when you're correct, or at least when what you say makes sense. And I expect you to challenge me if you, something I say you think doesn't make sense. So why does the fact that the 12 disciples came to a bad end help you believe that a man came back from dead? Because they, the they themselves believed it to the point where they were, they were willing to face the ultimate punishment of death. And they were willing, they were willing to believe that, you know, I'm, okay. I should, I will fight for this for my life and be killed over this, which Okay. In Revelations, buy, a similar can, thing is talked about that's going to happen. I, I can buy that. The beast. I, I can buy that they believed that. And they were killed because but, but, they believed that. that doesn't, their belief does not make the resurrection true. It just means that they believed something that was right. probably untrue or possibly untrue, to be kinder. See, the, well, you're connecting. You're connected. Their belief did not cause the resurrection to become true. It just shows, it just demonstrates, if that part of the story is accurate, that they believed, and for whatever reason, they died for it. I, and I'm, I'm assuming that it was just the Romans were sort of gathering, they're trying to shut down the cult or something to that degree, but I, uh, I don't know. So, But do you see what I'm saying? The fact that they believed did not make the resurrection more likely to have happened. Yeah. 
It, it, you, you, there, they don't like. They don't like. There's, there's, there's not really any evidence in the Bible that proves. Like I said, it's, yeah. it's something you have to believe, right? You have to have faith. That's well, the best part about religion is there's no guarantee. Yeah. You but the go more, the, faith the more you do. So can I ask you to do this? Go ahead. Is that? There's two things I want you to do because I don't think I'm going to be able to convince you and I have to, I have to leave soon, but for you and all the people in this live, could I ask you to do two things? Uh, you're, probably gonna the Bible. Do, you're probably going to ask me to do something I've already done before, but go ahead. Read, read the book of Genesis. Okay. I've done, done that. The whole thing. I just done, want you to do it again with that. an open mind and think of done, yourself not as, to, not as trying to disprove it, done but that. as okay remember remember i told you when i when i read it i was not a convinced atheist i was leaning that way and i was looking for the bible to justify itself so i have i have done what you asked already and then also to read the two books of mark and john completely with an open mind I've done i'm that. just asking you to do it again because why you could just it's just like trying a new food you might not like it the first five food. times. It's not a. Then why eat it again? You know. You would try go, it again read, and realize. Go, hey, go read Mormonism. Go read Dianetics. Or watching, I mean, or watching a movie again. You notice things that you didn't okay. notice before. And lastly, I no, ask no, you to read. No, no. Revelations. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do that because I've already done it. Okay. Now asking me to do it six times more, is basically just asking me to you know well you're not you don't believe because you haven't tried hard enough kind of a thing okay um, so you can you're gonna have to convince me on the facts and the evidence and the logic and i know you say we can have the faith discussion another time because that's a that's a bigger tip that's a different topic um so i know you you know we went through half a dozen things there and and none of them seem to come to the point where they could justify the belief and that's what it just seems to me that there's when you really look at them point by point they're all weak you have a collection of it's like a week it's like having a weekend in poker or blackjack or something you have a collection of weak cards mm -hmm. a, a collection of weak stuff doesn't total to be a strong hand and I, so let's kind of leave it there all right. Call me again. We'll talk about faith, okay? So the last thing I want to say is just, it's never too late to learn more. It doesn't matter. It's never too late. It's never too late to change your opinion. Everybody's entitled to your opinion, to their own opinion. I mean, and uh, it's. But, but I can, can you, tell you haven't create. You haven't committed the unforgivable sin, which is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, right? But you, you, you still, agree you that, still you agree that, I can tell that well, in your on, soul you are on. completely sure. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, Ronnie. I hear you. But hold on, you're willing to learn too, right? I mean, you're just not not just. Of course, you. I would love. You're, yeah, you're, I would love to hear your piece. You're. Let me just put it this way: you, you, we are both open to wanting to know what the truth is. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, I think that's a good place to to leave, All right. and we'll pick it up another time. Well, thank you for your time, and have a good thank night. You. Take care.